Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial, Galvai's Theory, Class Number 3. In this video, we prove two theorems. The first one, God's Lemma. Let us see the statement. Let f of x belongs to z of x be primitive polynomial. Then f of x is reducible over q if and only if f of x is reducible over capital Z. So we prove this theorem. Here, primitive means the polynomial the polynomial f of x belongs to z of x is primitive primitive means the gcd gcd greatest common divisor of coefficients of the polynomial f of x is equals to 1 the GCD of the coefficients of the polynomial f of x is equals to 1. We have to prove that. We have to prove that this f of x belongs to z of x is reducible. Is reducible over capital Q. The set of rational numbers is reducible over Q. The set of rational numbers implies and implied by f of x is reducible reducible over capital z so we here f of x is a primitive polynomial our aim is to prove that f of x is reducible over q then implies and implied by f of x is reducible over z so right suppose f of x is reducible over z Suppose f of x is reducible over z. f of x is reducible over z. Everybody knows that trivially this z is subset to q. Set of integers is subset to q. f of x is reducible over z. Then obviously this f of x is reducible, reducible over capital Q. This is the first part of our theorem. Now let us see the converse part. Suppose f of x is reducible over q. Suppose this f of x is reducible. This f of x is reducible over q. f of x is reducible over q means then f of x can be written as product of two non-constant polynomials. f of x can be written as product of two non-constant polynomials like this f of x is equals to u of x into v of x where both u of x comma v of x belongs to capital q of x capital q of x but but u of x does not belongs to q v of x does not belongs to q u of x and v of x does not belongs to q means they are non-constant polynomials they are non-constant polynomials it means so we assume that f of x is reducible over q by the definition of reducibility f of x can be written as product of two non-constant polynomials with both u of x and v of x belongs to the polynomial ring q of x but u of x does not belongs to q v of x also does not belongs to q it means they are they are clearly non-constant polynomials they are non-constant polynomials so right now this expression can be written as f of x is equals to a by b into u dash of x into v dash of x a by b into u dash of x into v dash of x where a by b is gcd of the coefficients of this polynomial and also remember that both u dash of x and v dash of x are primitive polynomials are primitive polynomials are primitive polynomials in z of x i repeat this point here observe that 
this point can be written as f of x is equals to f of x is equals to a by b into u dash of x into v dash of x where u dash of x and v dash of x are primitive polynomials in z of x and a by b is the gcd of that polynomials so rearranging them rearranging them we get b into f of x is equals to a into u dash of x into v dash of x now already by data this f of x is primitive so gcd of gcd of b into coefficients of the polynomial f of x is equals to gcd into b into polynomials it is b and gcd of a into u dash of x into v dash of x where both u dash of x and v dash of x are primitive polynomials so the product of primitive polynomials is also equivalent to primitive hence their gcd must be equivalent to 1 so you get plus r minus a so combining these two in this equation you get b is equals to plus r minus a b is equals to plus r minus a if b is equals to plus r minus a then obviously if b is equals to plus r minus a then obviously this equation gives us b into f of x is equals to plus r minus b into u dash of x into v dash of x so this b this b get cancelled so f of x is equals to plus r minus u dash of x into v dash of x it means what it means f dash of x is product of two non-constant polynomials product of two non-constant polynomials u dash of x and v dash of x in the polynomial ring z of x it means f of x is reducible f of x is reducible over capital z so we assume that f of x is reducible over capital q we prove that f of x is reducible over z that's it hence we conclude that f of x is reducible over z implies and implied by f of x is reducible over q whenever f of x is a primitive polynomial defined over z of x this completes the proof of the theorem I repeat again, uh, this is one of the important question, state and prove Gauss lemma, maybe the question like this, state and prove Gauss lemma. Let us see the statement first. The statement of Gauss lemma is that f of x belongs to z of x be a primitive polynomial, then f of x is reducible over q if and only if f of x is reducible over z. Let us take f of x belongs to z of x be primitive suppose f of x is reducible over z z is subset to q then f of x is reducible over q converse part suppose f of x is reducible over q by the definition of reducibility f of x can be written as a product of two non-constant polynomials u of x into v of x where both belongs to q of x but u of x and v of x does not belong to q means they are non-constant polynomials now this expression f of x can be written like this a by b into u dash of x into v dash of x where u dash of x and v dash of x both are primitive polynomials in z of x now it can be written as b into f of x is equals to a into u dash of x into v dash of x now the g already f of x is primitive so gcd of coefficients of b into f of x is b the gcd of coefficients of a into u dash of x into v dash of x is a since the product of primitive polynomials is primitive, u dash into v dash is also primitive. So it follows from b is equals to plus r minus a. So obviously after b, b get cancelled on both sides, f of x is equals to u dash of x into v dash of x. Where both u dash of x and v dash of x are primitive polynomials in z of x. Therefore f of x is reducible over capital Z. This completes the proof of our theorem. Hence proved. No, now, now we prove one more theorem. Let us see the statement. Here, uh, the, some statement is missing. 
I complete the statement first. f of x is equals to f of a naught plus a one x plus and so on a n x power a n minus one x power n minus one plus x power n belongs to z of x be a monic polynomial. Full stop. There is some another statement. Uh, another uh, one more sentence is there. If f of x has a root, if f of x has a root small a belongs to capital Q, then a belongs to Z and a divides a naught. This is the theorem. Important theorem. Important theorem. So I repeat the statement. Please observe that f of x is a monic polynomial. Remember that monic polynomial means the leading coefficient must be 1. And if f of x has a root small a belongs to capital Q, rational numbers, then a belongs to z. The same root belongs to integers and that a divides a naught. So we prove our theorem proof so let us see the proof suppose f of x has a root in q suppose f of x has a root in q f of x has a root in q means f of x has a root in q means then there must be an element a belongs to q satisfying the condition f of a is equals to 0 f of a is equals to 0 where q is the set of rational numbers q is the set of rational numbers means this a can be written in this form alpha by beta comma alpha comma beta both belongs to z but the denominator beta not equals to 0 and also you take a property for alpha beta the gcd of alpha comma beta is equivalent to 1 i repeat again the all these points Suppose we are assuming that f of x has a root in q. f of x has a root in q. It means f of a is equals to 0 for some a belongs to q. Since a belongs to q and q is, what is q? Set of rational numbers. Set of rational numbers. So, this A can be written as fractional form alpha by beta where both alpha comma beta belongs to Z and this beta not equals to 0. Give a property to alpha comma beta. The GCD of alpha comma beta is equals to 1. They are co-primes. Since f of A is equals to 0 and A is equals to alpha by beta, then obviously f of alpha by beta is also equivalent to 0 f of alpha by beta is also equivalent to 0. So, right. f of alpha by beta, what is f of x here? Here f of x in our theorem f of x is equals to a naught plus a1 x plus a2 x square plus and so on plus a n minus 1 x power n minus 1 plus x power n. Because it is a monic polynomial, the leading coefficient must be equivalent to 1. Here the leading coefficient is 1 f of a is equals to 0 implies what is a alpha by beta what is a we prove that a is equals to alpha by beta so f of alpha by beta is also equivalent to 0 f of alpha by beta is equivalent to 0 means replace that x by alpha by beta a naught i'm sorry a naught a1 alpha by beta plus a2 alpha by beta whole square plus and so on plus a n minus 1 a n minus 1 alpha by beta power n minus 1 plus alpha by beta whole power n is equals to 0 is equals to 0 now multiply on both the sides with beta power n minus 1 multiply on both the sides with beta power n minus 1 a naught beta power n minus 1 plus a1 alpha beta power n minus 2 plus a2 alpha square beta power n minus 3 plus and so on plus a n minus 1 alpha power n minus 1 because beta power n minus 1 get cancelled plus alpha power n beta power 
alpha power n beta power we are multiplying with beta power n minus 1 so beta power n minus 2 beta power n minus 2 is equals to 0 no you get uh, here that term is the last term is actually you have alpha power n by beta power n you are multiplying with beta power n minus 1 so this expression gives alpha power n by beta is equals to 0 right after sending this last term into rhs we get this form a naught beta power n minus 1 plus a1 alpha beta power n minus 2 plus and so on plus a n minus 1 a n minus 1 alpha power n minus 1 is equals to minus alpha power n by beta minus alpha power n by beta that's it now remember that since since both alpha comma beta belongs to z both alpha comma beta belongs to z it follows that minus alpha power n by beta also belongs to z it follows that beta must be equivalent to either plus or minus 1 if beta is plus or minus 1 now already we have a is equals to alpha by beta which implies as a is equals to plus or minus alpha a is equals to plus or minus alpha that's it because beta is equals to plus or minus 1 a is equals to plus or minus alpha <coughs> a is equals to here you see here this is not equals to 1 beta must be plus or minus 1 so a is equals to plus or minus alpha a is equals to plus or minus alpha and already we said that that alpha belongs to z so plus or minus alpha also belongs to z the value of a is plus or minus alpha so a belongs to z the first uh, point of our theorem is proved so we take that a is a root in q we show that a belongs to z we show that a belongs to z next we have to show that this a divides a naught this a divides a naught now same substitute this beta is equals to plus or minus 1 here in this equation beta is equals to plus or minus 1 here in this equation if you substitute beta is equals to plus or minus 1 in that equation you simply get this one a naught plus or minus 1 power here a naught plus r minus 1 power n minus 1 a1 alpha plus r minus 1 power n minus 2 and so on alpha power n now divide throughout by alpha we get a naught by alpha plus r minus 1 power n minus 1 a1 alpha plus r minus 1 power n minus 2 and so on alpha power n minus 1 this condition a naught by alpha shows us a alpha divides a naught alpha divides a naught means and alpha is equal alpha divides alpha divides a naught means and alpha is equals to plus or minus a so we conclude that plus or minus a divides a naught therefore a divides a naught this completes our proof a belongs to z and a divides a naught this is also one of the important theorem to check the reducibility of the monic polynomials to check the roots of the monic polynomials where they are lies in the set of real numbers or set of integers so observe that keep learning wish you all the best